Hello and welcome to my thesis presentation for the Master of Data Science. My name is Jacob Vandenbroek and my project has been sponsored by Metso Autotech, an international mining services company. My project is titled Developing a Shoot Liner Wear Prediction Algorithm. So shoots are a really important part of the mining value chain. They facilitate the safe and reliable transport of bulk ore through a vast network of assets on a mine site. Due to the high throughput and coarse nature of the ore, sacrificial wear liners need to be installed to protect the underlying structure. If these liners wear too far, there can be damage to the underlying structure, and if they wear too fast, there can be unplanned downtime for maintenance, resulting in lost production. Along with manufacturing the liners, METSO also manufacture and maintain WearSense, an Internet of Things sensor monitoring system for chute liners. The sensors are embedded into the chute and act as the bolt which binds the liner to the asset. A small probe then penetrates to the wear surface and wears away with the liner, recording thickness as a point estimate in the process. This information is then displayed on a web user interface. And this is what an engineer might see on the web user interface, uh, specifically the data for one sensor, where we have date on the x-axis and thickness on the, y set on the y-axis. The observed values are represented by the solid green line and predictions are represented by the dashed line coming off at about February 2022. The current method for this prediction is a simple linear regression and it's my task to improve this. So what constitutes an improvement? In my mind, that is reducing the error and incorporating prediction uncertainties in the form of a shaded region around the prediction line. So let's take a look at the data. Uh, firstly, there were significant delays in getting access to the data. So I did an initial investigation into the factors that affect where. And most common in the literature were things like uh, throughput, speed of impact, angle of impact, and the ore characteristics. And unfortunately, uh, Metzler didn't have access to any of this data, um, so I had to stick with uh, thickness and time. And overall, we had data for 968 sensors across 17 assets at nine mine sites. But due to modeling considerations um, and the way that I was going to evaluate these models, I needed data for sensors that have seen a full full profile of wear, uh, meaning that they have uh, recorded consistently until reaching uh, a value of zero millimeter thickness. In total, there were 38 of those. Um, and as Hopper 1 contained the most of these full wear profile sensors, it was then used um, or the focus for this analysis. Taking a further look into the data, um, for a single sensor, we can see that it, the raw data is quite noisy. There are combinations of non-monotonous decrease, um, increasing values, sensor failures, and irregular intervals between observations, and much more. Um, so a script was developed to clean this data and extract the full wear profile sensors. Um, and that's an example of the, what the filtered data looks like after the script has been applied. So the three main challenges so far, are therefore, um, the noisy raw data, a low amount of these um, full wear profile sensors or historical sensors, uh, and no, none of this throughput information or any of the factors that affect where. With these challenges and aims in mind, uh, the approach used was a Bayesian approach, and that's because of two main reasons. The first being that we can incorporate engineering knowledge in the form of a prior, and the advantage of this has been shown uh, to improve predictions when there are little amounts of observed data. The prior in this case, is information that is obtained from a set of sensors um, considered to be from a previous installation. And I'll call these historical sensors. The Bayesian method then combines the data uh, or this prior information um, with the observed data for a sensor we wish to make predictions on. Um, 
to form a posterior distribution. The second reason uh, for using a Bayesian methodology is that uncertainties can be described through a probability distribution, meaning that the results are then placed on the probability scale. And we can make inferences such as there will be uh, a 95% chance that thickness will reach zero millimeters between 30 and 50 days uh, as arbitrary points. So this pro, uh, flow chart describes the entire process and I'll go through each stage one by one. So as we've seen previously, the data gets filtered based on some business logic and the full wear profile sensors are then extracted. Uh, and there are 20 full wear profile sensors in the data set. So 70% sample of these sensors is taken as the historical set. And these are used to build the prior information for the sensors of interest. Hierarchical Bayesian linear regression is performed on this set of 14 sensors. And as this is a linear regression, the parameters that we are interested in are the intercept and slope, which describe the initial line of thickness and wear rate. The mean of these parameters is then taken and standardized for clustering which groups similar sensors together. Affinity propagation was chosen as the clustering method as the number of clusters is not known and needs to be determined by the data provided. The algorithm returns the number of exemplars, one for each cluster. This exemplar is a representative point for all points within that cluster. So once we have built the clusters for historical sensors, we then move on to modelling the active sensors, which are the sensors we wish to make predictions for. The active sensors represent 30% of the number of sensors available. In this case, this amounts to six sensors. As we wish to evaluate the models at different points in time, each active sensors data is reduced to 10% intervals of observed data. For example, if we have a sensor with 10 points, points ranging from 30 millimeters to zero millimeters, a 20% subset will include only the first two points. The models are then built using only these two points and the remaining points are used for evaluation. From here, we build three models. The first being a model which assumes the sensor will behave exactly as a historical sensor. And I'll call this model one. Secondly, a model which uses information from the clustering of historical sensors plus the information from the observed data of the active sensor. And I'll call that model two. And finally, a simple linear regression model to mimic what is commonly used in industry. And I'll call that the industry method. To build models one and two, a Bayesian hierarchical linear regression is performed on the split of active sensor data to obtain the intercept and slope parameters for each sensor. The mean of the intercept and slope parameters from the active sensors are then standardized using the mean and the standard deviation from the historical set and assigned to a cluster by taking the minimum Euclidean distance from the active sensor parameters to the exemplars. Model one is built using the exemplar values as the intercept and slope effectively creating a model which is the same as that of a historical sensor. And model two is built as a Bayesian linear regression using the observed data from the active sensor with the prior information being the parameter values of a historical sensor. The models are then evaluated using the prediction error at zero millimeters thickness. This process was repeated five times using different subsets of historical and active sensors each time the mean of the errors was taken. <clears throat> so this image is the predictions uh, of each model for a single sensor using 30% of, of observed data indicated by this vertical black line. On the x-axis again, we have time and on the y-axis we have thickness in millimeters. As we can see from this chart, um, the Linear regression or the industry method significantly over predicts the true value uh, at zero millimeters thickness. Whereas models two, uh, models one and two are, are 
quite quite a bit closer. We can also see that only model two incorporates the prediction uncertainties. Um, and this is because uh, due to the desired interpretation of uncertainties, the only way that we can incorporate that is in model two. Um, and while model two appears to be the best model for this sensor to get a holistic understanding, we need to look at the model performance across all sensors and different subsets of sensors. So this image on the right shows the mean absolute error of each model for predictions at zero millimeters thickness across five random subsets of active and historical sensors. Uh, at each percentage of observed data. What we can see is that models one and two perform uh, better up until 60% of observed data, um, where then uh, it performs equally as well as the industry method. This presents an advantage uh, as engineers are able to more accurately plan scheduled maintenance earlier. So in summary, model two achieves the goals uh, outlined at the start of this analysis. But perhaps what is of more value to Mezzo um, were the intermediate findings from clustering. The figure on the left shows the main parameter values of each sensor, coloured by the cluster that it's assigned to. And what we can see is there is separation along the axis, X axis, meaning that sensors do in fact exhibit different rates of wear. Interestingly, we have two sensors separated on the Y axis. And this indicates uh, anomalous behavior. So this visualization of the clustering can be used to identify uh, sensors which are anomalous. The image on the right then displays the information from clustering on a fold out schematic of the shoot divided into four panels of the shoot. If we isolate the bottom panel, we can see that the sensors are then clustered together in space based on wear rate where we have the faster wearing sensors on the right here uh, and then the slower wearing sensors on the left. And this really sort of validates that this spatial information is important to include in the model and that uh, using the spacier method and incorporating this information in a prior, uh, that this information is then being used in the models created. These findings are particularly useful. Um, previously, engineers would have to inspect the wear graphs of sensors individually, whereas now they can look at a lot of sensors at once with a low cognitive load. So overall, the benefits of this work, um, we can sort of, we can reduce the unplanned downtime through earlier estimation of remaining useful life. Um, we can perform anomaly detection to identify faulty sensors. Um, we can identify uh, different wear rates inside the chute and then operators could then make decisions to ensure liners are used effectively. And it allows for data-driven decision-making, which there is a big push for in industry. As for future work, um, the main thing which will improve the prediction pre predictions is including throughput information. Um, however, there needs to be sort of significant testing on these models for other shoots because uh, other shoots in fact um, display non-linear functions of wear um, and lastly improvements can be made to the clustering method whereby instead of taking the marine the mean of parameter values uh, we can keep the entire distribution uh, but that is all for my presentation thank you